feast of the memorial of the holy body and blood of Christ, formerly known as Corpus Christi. I extend that welcome to all of you and to all who are viewing now from near and far. Welcome. As we gather, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and as we enter these sacred mysteries together, we take a moment now as we ask the Lord now to look on us with mercy as we acknowledge our sins. You raise us to a new life in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You nourish us in word and sacrament to strengthen us. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. With the heavenly hosts, we too give glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for forty years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers, in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth, swiftly runs his word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that, come da- that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, my blood true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Perhaps the most effective ritual for helping our Jewish ancestors maintain their identity was the annual Passover celebration. It was in the context of that celebration that Jesus gave us the Last Supper. Do this in memory of me. Asked if he could explain now the theory of relativity in a simple way, Albert Einstein said, no, but if you come home with me, I will play it for you on the violin. Some things just can't be explained, but they are nonetheless real. And the Eucharist is like that. It is a sacrament of relativity, constantly in motion. It maintains our relationships. It is the mystical communion. Many have been away from the Eucharist, the very body and blood of Christ, for a long time. Due to the dangerous pandemic, we were quickly separated from the physical reception of this source and presence of love incarnate, of inspiration, of strength. As church teaching reminds us, as efficacious, beautiful, and grace-filled the sacraments are, God is not bound by them. He always finds a way. And even though the pain of physical separation from the body of Christ, the Eucharist, the very presence of God stirs and works in each member of the living body of Christ so that the divine image can still be revealed and we can become precisely what we are meant to receive. Or as Paul Porter will hear at the ordination rite in two weeks, imitate the mysteries you receive. The love relationship fostered with God cannot be taken or diminished in one who truly desires it and believes. The community of believers, through the gift of Eucharist, the power and have the power and the presence to touch and heal in the name of the one whom they desire to welcome. So many wonderful Eucharistic blessings have taken place over the last several weeks. Families have been brought closer together. The hectic, frenzied pace of life has been put on hold for a bit. Deeper conversations with those who matter the most have occurred. Generosity toward those who are struggling and bearing the brunt of the pandemic's economic fallout is being demonstrated. Our dependence upon God is being realized or renewed. And our need for community, social interaction, simply just a hug and support confirmed. And you know what? The earth is healing just a little bit too. Our call to solidarity is being realized. And the list goes on in terms of how, even in spite of the absence of the physical reception of the Blessed Sacrament, God is inspiring, 
working, transforming, forming, and redeeming the world piece by piece. All these things and more, I hope, bring hope to those who fall easily into despair. They are lights in the midst of darkness. Nothing can stop grace. But we also realize that separation, while bearable for a time, cannot be allowed to last forever. We cannot, we must connect again. The Eucharistic meal is a celebration of intimacy, of the reunion of two loves in constant search of and longing for the other. And these wonderful reunions are happening all over the world as churches are slowly seeking to open up again. It is within our grasp, especially after the experience we have endured and continue to endure, to change the way life is lived and to more intentionally put into practice the beatitude this divine guest has revealed to us. We are asked to be like Christ and to work to create a world of sufficiency, not deficiency, where no longer does greed of some create the want of others. The one who makes a home within us calls us to live that life and that transformed time more than ever to allow the Eucharistic presence, the presence of Christ, to change us so that we can become agents of change for others. People, our environment, economic systems are hurting. We have to set our relationships straight. This is the Eucharistic way. If we see our relationship now with the body and blood of Christ simply as something necessary for our personal salvation, we are wrong, period. It was and never has been just about me, what I need, what I want, what I merit, or how I want it to be. If we really recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread, we will also recognize him in the poor, the forgotten, all who cry out for wholeness, for healing. What we do for them, we do for Christ. The very presence of God touches the depths of the human soul and visits a part of us that no human being can ever hope to explore. We are God's sons and daughters. No one can welcome Jesus and close his door to his brothers and sisters. The amen we say, although during this time we just nod our head and not say it, but even the nodding of a head acknowledges two realities. One, the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. Two, whoever receives the Eucharist agrees to be the body of Christ, to give one's life to flesh out that real presence for others. Here today, we sit at the table of the Lord, and we are invited now, as sons and daughters, to partake in this divine meal. And so we have to ask ourselves, what are the consequences of the food we eat? How does this sharing affect my relationship with God and the other? Today, as we celebrate this intimate union of Christ with his people, we also celebrate today a 50th wedding anniversary of an intimate relationship that is called now to be a sign of Christ into the world as well. And so, Margie and Mike, I invite you to come forward now. So Margie and Mike, you know well we never take things for granted. We never know what could happen tomorrow. And yet we continue now to be faithful to God in our relationships. 
And so we ask God's blessing on you today as you mark this 50th anniversary, as you begin now the next 50th, 50 years. And so we pray. Lord God and creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise bless the union now of Margie and Mike so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. And so look with kindness on them today. And amid all the joys and the struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew now their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God the Father give you joy. May the only Son of God have mercy on you, help you in good times and bad. And may the Holy Spirit of God always fill your hearts with love. And may Almighty God bless you both, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may kiss your bride. Congratulations. And so we stand together now and to profess the faith as God's people, I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begot, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And as the living body of Christ, we offer our prayers and petitions for the needs of the world and for one another. For church unity, that all may be one, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing to receive First Holy Communion and for those who yearn to receive the body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For medical teams, researchers, frontline personnel on this pandemic, and for all who health, whose health is at risk, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Judith Figaro, mother of Scott Figaro, Ricardo Gonzalez, father of David Gonzalez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Jimmy Anayavez, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember, pray now for Margie and for Mike in this 50th anniversary, and for all who are preparing for the sacrament of matrimony in the weeks and days and months ahead, we pray to the Lord. Lord and Heavenly Father, hear the prayers of your people assembled before you. We make our prayers known in the name of the Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation in your goodness. We have this bread to offer, which earth has given to us, human hands have made. Let it become the bread of life. By the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in Christ's divinity, who humbled himself to take on our human nature. 
Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation. In your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands. Let it become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us. Be pleased with the offering we bring before you. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me in my sins. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who is Father of all. Grant your church, O Lord, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we present here through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and lift up your hearts. And, lift up the Lord. and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always in every way to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as a saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. As we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. Hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, with St. Peter Chanel, and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth 
with your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Archbishop, Bernard and Joel, his auxiliary bishops, with all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, and there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We prepare now to receive the Holy Eucharist. We pray the words our Savior taught us as we say, Our Father, Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, remember it is my peace I give you. And so today we ask you to look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always. And, with your spirit. and let us share with one another a gesture, a word of peace. Thanks. Lamb of God, you take Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and in body. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of all the world. Blessed are those called today to the supper of the Lamb.
O Sacrament Most Holy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to glorify God with our lives. Thanks be to God.